again, it's Priscilla Batzell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expression Start Studio Gallery in the backyard. Happy New Year! No matter what time of year it is, I hope you're having a good one. These are my cups that came from the local church resale shop, and I will use those, and I recommend you go find some because they are the best pouring tools I have, bar none. I am still in the mood to experiment with what's in this bottle, which is Deco Art White Satin Enamel, and I've just become completely enamored of the stuff. And I think because I want to float a layer of it, no, that's not it. I'm just going to put it in my larger cup. And I have been experimenting for a while now, trying to make some zebra prints with regular pouring mixture. Well, this is the same pouring mixture. I'm going to shake that again. I shook it once already today, but then I made up some more. And whatever's in there is out of the tip now. Now I'm only using a 9 by 12 canvas, so I'm going to stop kind of soon as far as overfilling my cup. But whatever paint is left, I'm not afraid to use it anyway. I've got sticky wrap to seal up my containers if I need to, and I'm not afraid to use them. So here's my 9 by 12. And I am going to give myself a nice little layer of black, which is my usual my usual recipe for black or white, is usually uh, half Artist Loft, the bulk size brand, and uh, usually some Walmart <laughs> semi-gloss, to tell you the truth. And uh, the paint pouring recipe is below the video, so if you're looking for that, it'll tell you the uh, percentages, or you can ask me a question anytime you want to. There's not many of you left right now, but I'm hoping that changes. You never know. Um, I can't imagine there's any particular reason for it. I have edge catchers handy. They will stop the paint from flowing off if I decide I want to do that. I'm going to give myself a little puddle of paint of this satin enamel semi-gloss to begin with, and then I'm going to just make the most random of patterns, because that was what was working the best for me the other day. I'm going to stop before I go too far and see what I get. I want all the rest of that paint off of there. I'm going to wipe off my spatula. These spatulas are available on the Amazon link, my Amazon link below, show more, and whenever you shop there, you help me out. Don't ask me why. I don't know, it might work better than what I was trying last week, but I want... Some more random patterns in there and it does seem to go further I, I used an awful lot too much paint when I started doing this and I know other people don't use edge catchers but um, I do and the nice thing about the edge catcher especially if you haven't covered your canvas to begin with is that you can let the paint flow down over the edge you can make a puddle you can retrieve your puddle you can run your puddle down the edge you can squeeze it back into the canvas again what I mean by retrieve is you can take it right off the edge catcher and use it. So I'm sort of getting some zebra stripes, at least more than I was. Doesn't keep me from wanting to put another couple squeezes right into my, what is it, a cream pitcher probably? So my best luck with these traveling ribbon pours was to put some down and then put some more down and tip and keep tipping and see what happens as the designs spread and then I add more designs. Now because I want some paint over there I'm going to go ahead and give myself permission and spread that back over. It looks a lot more like an agate than it ever will a zebra but <laughs> that's okay. The uh, the result is kind of similar to what I had in mind. I'm going to use whatever came off the edge catcher on my spatula to help paint move paint. Usually I'll put an edge catcher on my turntable so I won't get paint on it, but I think I just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to use whatever I get on my edges right now before I go on. Because I hate wasting paint. I don't think I have to if I think about it. 
and uh, I really definitely want some black over there right now. So run a bead along the top edge, let it fall down, and it's only a 9 by 12 canvas. It's a lot easier to juggle one of these than it is a 16 by 20, which is my usual MO. I love 16 by 20s. I think I have 200 of them anyway. So I'm going to do, I'm going to take the paint that I see flowing off in drips on this other side, and I'm just going to cover what I can with what I've got and then add one more bead, and I'm going to call that good. I have to take my bottle off my edge catcher because I'm going to use it again on the turntable this time, so I can be a little more tidy. Now, that's pretty cool, but I definitely like the idea of changing the game up by experimenting with different kinds of shapes and lines. I also like to, to let things flow in a diagonal. And since I can have any of the paint that I use that comes right off my picture back in the canvas, back in the artwork, I can uh, just use a spatula. Now, I've, what I've discovered is that if I put drips in, the weight of the paint will then run faster than any of the weight of the design. And I can do it from both directions. And I like experimenting like that because you make some really interesting patterns and you learn as you go what you might get. That's pretty cool actually. I want another one over here. Sometimes it's a little tenuous, you know, balancing things. But I like having some solid colors in there. That interests me quite a bit. I got a black cat. A funky little kitty. Not for long though, I'm afraid. And then I like the colors, the, the combinations of patterns that I'm seeing on my edge catcher. So chances are good. I'm just gonna, you know what? I am. I'm just gonna try and get it as much of that, just like it is, as I possibly can. Because it'll come right off the spatula in a striped band. So that was a good experiment for me. I think it actually worked too. I am going to con contemplate if I want to do anything else to this. I gotta quit doing that. <laughs> what I need to do is always have an edge catcher if I want to take any paint off my tile. I'm not sure I love that gray. But I'm not sure I hate it either, so I'm going to use it. Now what else can I do to this since I'm here, and I'm going to obviously have to clean my tile. And if you know me, you know I love dotting things. So why not have a few dots? And I'm going to just grab a, uh, a bamboo skewer. So I'm less likely to have any mistakes. And that adds some interest for me. And not only do I like the black, but I think there's going to be some white involved here. But I might be tempted. No, I'm going to clean it off. I was going to, I was going to leave the paint on my skewer. But I think I'm just going to use my, my paint rag clothing again. All right, well, that first one was definitely an accident. And we are experimenting with what will happen. I love the uh, the white satin enamel because it basically stays on the surface and it doesn't sink away, which is pretty neat. Which means you can kind of draw with it. I know somebody's going to say some biological event when I make those little squiggly things, but um, that's not what I'm thinking of. You know who you are. <laughs> so that's kind of cool, and I'm, I'm liking my composition is 
becoming a composition. And I am just learning as I go what I can do with the white satin enamel and the black and white is a great contrast. Just drag a few things up and out and put a few flower forms in there. I'm almost done and I, I definitely want to show you guys what happens when I torch. Not a whole lot has been happening when I torch, but sometimes when you torch late in the game, you don't really get as many potential cells as you do when you torch to begin with. Hey, that went right where I wanted it to. I think. Let's just drag those right out. So, where else? Anything else? Um... I'm thinking. I've been making these really cool little shapes where I add a add a line of a sort of a, a bead, a strand of dots, and then drag them together. But um, I'm kind of just liking what I've got, and I'm really curious to see if if they sink away or not. All right, it's time to torch, and then I'll be gone. I just, there's something else I want here and I'm not sure what it is. I guess that was it. Oh, that's neat. I like that. I didn't intend on that. I do now. I like a little more black right up there and I think I like the same thing down here. So if I just pick up my, my bamboo skewer, I said I wouldn't, and then I did. I love those little shapes. I really do. And I am just learning what I can do and what I can't do. Because satin enamel definitely reacts kind of differently. So this is neat. And you can tell I'm, I'm still enamored and not done playing at all. It's a pretty simple little painting. Oh, we're getting lots of cells. Check that out. There is no silicone in any of my mix, but uh, my mixture, Decor Pouring Medium with GAC 800 and Floetrol, does produce cells when you warm the paint. And we got some beautiful, beautiful texture going on down there. Just popped all over the place. Look at that. That is so cool. So I've also been thinking about the fact that I've never, since I haven't done much of this enamel, I can wait a little while and let it start to get tacky because it stays kind of heavy and then at that point I can also use balloons. I'm not so sure chains will work as well but I'm pretty sure that the balloons will. So I like that little white bit up there and I, I kind of, for the sake of the composition, I want a couple more places just to ba balance the eye and, and create some interest. And that's doing that for me. I know I could put color in there. I'm kind of wondering why I didn't go ahead and dot the rest of this. This is just a total experiment with all the different ways that I can do things from start to finish. And where, wherever my eye goes that I want to add something, I'm just going to give myself permission to do that. And I like, especially now, because with the regular paint, I can't necessarily stick my bamboo skewer in without creating a whole lot of glop. But I seem to be able to do that a little more freely with this. Anyway, so this is Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida. And if you like my experiments or you would like to see my channel stay in existence, please give me a thumbs up. And... Uh, if you like what I just did, share my video. Sharing my videos helps. Watching the commercials helps. I wish I could get rid of them. I, I'm on the edge of my seat as far as trying to decide whether I'm going to do that or not. Anyway, so that was fun. Thank you guys for joining me. And uh, if you're looking for another video, or maybe other 999, on my, uh, on my channel, 
you're going to find playlists of genres and by the hundred, yes, I'm focused, uh, <laughs> genres are sort of like, um, you know, geometrics, flowers, bursts, what else, landscapes. So this is Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expression Start Studio saying thank you for supporting me all this time. I hope you don't stop, but if you do, I'm going to hang out as long as I can until I run out of art supplies. If you want to be of more of assistance to me, to still um, shopping on my Amazon link is a big assistance at no idea cost to you. And uh, I love you guys. I don't know how many thousand there are, but I love you guys no matter how few there are or how many there are. You guys take care and Happy New Year again. And I'm going to go back to playing with some colors in a second. Yeah, I don't mind that. It's different. It was a good experiment. I think if I hadn't kept tipping it or torching it, I probably would have uh, had a better zebra effect. But I'm going to have some cleanup on that tile. But it's, um, I'm trying to teach myself to use less paint. All right, I'm sure I forgot a lot of things, but um, thank you guys for being here. I'll see you sometime, maybe tomorrow. I still post a video every day so far. Bye for now. Priscilla out, and I will see you anon.